Greetings all warriors of light and soon to be warriors of darkness and welcome back to another video. So I already did a list of things to do before Shadowbringers comes out but that was more of a long term list of things to do. Just things that I thought would keep you busy until Shadowbringers came out. But now with Shadowbringers only days away I thought that I would leave you all with a quick tip video based mostly on my own experience and my advice on how best to survive the rush when Shadowbringer begins. Now in case you don't know, which you have to be living under a rock or something if you don't, but the official release date for 5.0 is on July 2nd. However, the early access is for this upcoming Friday on the 28th. So those who have pre-ordered the game will be able to play a few days before the 2nd. And what better time to give you my tips to survive in the excitement than right now. Tip number one, do the main scenario questline first. Now this is a very important tip because usually you won't be able to unlock anything unless you do the main scenario questline and that is generally the main reason why I play this game. We're going to be picking up the story where we left off with Tataru in the Rising Stone so just before that 24 hour shutdown of the system I would suggest that you turn on your main scenario questline UL element which will be able to tell you where to go for the main scenario questline and who to talk to next. They have this setting for hide if there are no more quests and once you finish the main scenario quest line it will go away until patch 5.1 when they'll have more patches out for you. So I'm predicting that most people will be signing off at Mordona just inside the Rising Stone so that they will immediately be able to pick up the storyline once they go back on. I would however advise anyone to be careful because the early access and even up to the release date is going to be full of players who are trying to get in and that tends to lead to a lot of issues such as the screen freezing, you're disconnecting, load problems so I suggest just please be careful out there. Tip number two, stock up on in-game food. Now the second thing that you should always have on hand is food because the food in game can give you a slight boost as well as the 3% experience boost. You can either choose to have the food at your free company, your apartment or private home set up and ready to go but that would mean having to go back and forth between the two worlds so I suggest that you have just a few meals on hand. Best part is that you don't need to make them unless you want to anyway. To save you time and energy just head to one of the city states and you can easily buy a stack of food for some pretty cheap prices. Now I know that 3% may not seem like much but we all know the grind of just trying to level up all of our classes. So every little bit does help. Not only that it's a good way of actually keeping track of how much time goes by when you're playing the game. So like if you tell yourself I'm only going to be able to play for a couple hours. Well, so long as you keep an eye on the food, you'll know exactly how much time you have left. Tip number three, get your chores slash errands done. Now, unless you're one of those gamers who lives at home and never goes outside or doesn't need to, which I envy you if that's true, you probably have responsibilities and promises to keep. Whether that means cleaning up your house, going to the bank, paying your bills, going to school or work, etc. The fact is we all have busy lives. Now most people would probably be off from school at this point but if you're a college student or you're taking summer classes you're bound to have to do some homework. You do not want to be one of those people who get so caught up in the game that they lose track of the rest of the world and you look at the clock at 3 a.m. only to realize you did not finish that book report or science project. Nor do you want to be sitting in your room while the mountain of dirty dishes in your sink start to grow mold and practically crawl away from your house before you remember to clean. The point I'm trying to make is that you don't need to be thinking or worrying about your bills or work while playing a game. And you don't want to give the excuse, but I was playing this game to your boss when you come in late for work or risk a failing grade for a school project you forgot to do. That is why in these next few days try to get them done as soon as possible so you don't need to panic about it later. Not only that, but knowing that you did take care of all of that beforehand you generally feel much better and you have much less stress which will help improve the gaming experience for you. Tip number four, clean out your inventory. Now they did state that there's going to be 200 new slots for the glamour dresser and let's face it we're all going to need it. So before you go jumping right into the game just take a few minutes and take a lot of prisms and just store everything in the dresser and that you want to keep or aren't ready to get rid of yet. 
You will be getting a lot more stuff from this expansion, and you are going to be needing as much room as possible. So that means clearing out your inventory, your armory, your saddlebags, your glamour dresser, retainers. Just toss out anything that you don't need anymore. Or you can donate it to your grand company or the Domen Enclave for just a few extra seals or coins. Now it may seem like a tough choice, like you just want to hold on to everything because it looks cool, but don't be afraid to clear out with the old to make room for the new. Tip number five, clean up your hot bars. Now it's no secret that our hot bars are often a confusing mess. Now we seem to have it in our minds that we have this in a specific way so that it makes sense to us, and oftentimes that's enough. However, with the new expansion, we need to remember that we're going to be gaining new abilities as well as losing older actions. So I think that now is probably a good time to get things cleared up and practice with some of your other abilities. Go out and hit a training dummy a few times just as you work on figuring it all out and getting used to the new buttons. Or see if you want to run a few dungeons solo just to see how well you can do it. The choice is up to you. Tip number six, make sure to take breaks and naps. For someone who plays a lot of games and spends a lot of time on the computer, take my advice when I say that staring at a computer screen for hours and hours can often cause massive headaches. It's important to take breaks after a while playing. There is no need to worry because the game isn't going anywhere. Just a 45 minute to an hour long break can often clear your head and make you feel much better. The best suggestion I would have is to just go out, take a quick walk just to clear your head and give your eyes a break. Remember, you can always come back to the game whenever you want, and often after a quick power nap, it will make you feel like you just won 1 million MGP from the gold saucer. Tip number 7. Exercise. I hate to say it, but pushing buttons isn't usually a good form of exercise. Like I said before with taking occasional breaks and naps, just try to spend some time working out. A quick walk or a jog, stretching out, or even just heading out to grab a quick snack will make you feel a lot better after sitting still for so long. Tip number eight, shower. This may seem a bit silly, but I mean it. There is nothing worse than sitting in your own filth and smell. You do not want to be one of those people who really needs to start noticing their smell before they realize that they've been sitting there for several days and they stink to high heaven. Just pause between cutscenes, between dungeons, and just wash up. You will be grateful for it. You will be feeling better every single time. Tip number nine, food and drink. This is not going to be a game that you can play in one day. If you do, then that's just sad. But the point I'm trying to make is that we all get hungry. Make sure that you have some food and drink set up on the side for when you get hungry and to help keep your energy up. Also, I don't mean to sound like anyone's mother, but try mixing it up with just a few healthy snacks as well because when we eat a lot of junk food, that's when we feel sick and we don't want to do anything. Just a suggestion. Tip number 10, family time. Now it's important that we stay connected to people other than our online friends. It's good to interact with players, but please remember the people in your life. I swear, this happened to me last time and I was so absorbed in the game that I forgot to call my aunt once and suddenly she was sending me text messages asking if I was alright. Just send a text message, call them on a break. If you're living with family members, make sure to join them for meals and take the time to talk to them. If you want to talk to them about the game, go ahead and get them interested. Just take a few minutes at least out of your game time to let them know that you didn't die. And finally, tip number 11, probably the most important one on this list, story equals spoilers. Please, 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 please be considerate of other players and don't spoil the story for them. If you want to put up guides and walkthroughs online, I support that decision. I want you to go ahead and do that. All that I ask is that you put a spoiler warning at the beginning so that the story isn't ruined for other players. If you put up that warning ahead of time and someone sees it and has the ending spoiled for them, well that's on their heads, not yours. Just be mindful and let others play at their own pace. I know that I personally will not be able to play the game until the official release day. I put out a live reactions video for the launch trailer a few days ago, which you can go and check out if you want to see me completely freaking out, but I asked players not to drop any of the spoilers for the game for me because I wasn't going to be able to play until the official release date. Suddenly people were asking me why I couldn't play the early access. First of all, for those who informed me of this, 
thank you, but I feel that I just didn't explain it as well as I should have. See, what I meant was that I wasn't going to have time to really sit down and enjoy it on my PS4. Because Friday is going to be a day when I'm going out with friends for most of that day, and it's really the only day that I can actually sit back and have a good time with those friends. Not only that, but I also work on the weekends from 10 in the morning to 8.30 at night. So yes, it's very long days for Saturday and Sunday for me. On Mondays, it's not as bad. I mean, I still work from 11.30 to 8 at night, but the point here is that I literally have no time to be able to sit back and really enjoy the early access. So I decided that I would be focusing more on my work during those few extra days and to get my character just a little bit more prepared for when the release date actually comes out so that when I do finally have time to play, then I can focus on playing the game instead of work. Plus, a little extra time to prepare isn't bad at all. I like to take this gaming stuff seriously. So, yes, while I would really, really like to play Early Access, I'm afraid that that weekend is not a good time for me. However, that week I also have four days off, so I will be able to play for the next four days after the release date. So, that's something to look forward to. All that I ask is that once you play the game and you see amazing and cool stuff, all these shocking reveals that I'm sure that we're going to be getting, please, please don't tell me. Please do not spoil the ending for us. There is nothing worse than going through a story and knowing what's going to happen. All right, so these are just some of my tips to help you all survive 5.0's early access and or release date and the next few weeks afterwards. After all this time, I almost can't believe that we are in the final stretch. I hope that everyone is going to be ready and raring to go. And what do you think of my list, by the way? Did you find it helpful? If not, what are your suggestions to helping everyone survive the release of 5.0? Please subscribe for more videos, and I'm looking forward to meeting you all during Shadowbringers. So, until then, bye!